Alright guys, welcome back to another console mod showcase for Skyrim Special Edition. Yesterday I couldn't upload any videos, so I'm going to upload two videos today instead to make up for it. So we can cover all the better mods released from yesterday as well. Before we start guys, it's not worth adding to another video because we've gone over it already, but the mod Birds and Flocks is out for PS4. It's a revised version, so stuff has been taken out, but you can still get some birds in the game which is cool. I thought it was worth mentioning if you didn't already know. Also guys, I wanted to thank you for helping me reach 10 million views. I'm pretty sure 6 million of those views have come from Skyrim videos in the last few months. So really, really a big thank you to you guys. And also, I'm only a few thousand subs away from 60,000 subscribers as well, which is pretty mind-blowing. I will definitely hit 100k this year, which is super exciting. And so, a really big thank you to you guys. Finally guys, if you do like today's video, please hit the like button and share it on Facebook, Twitter, Reddit, or anywhere else you think you can share it. I really do appreciate it. It really helps me out a lot. Well, that's enough rambling from me. Let's jump into our first mod of the day. If you're tired of the same old blue-green colored glass weapons in Skyrim, then the Glass Weapon Recolor mod might be the one you should consider. Basically, it replaces the color of all the glass parts of the weapons only, so not the shield or the armor for now, or the bow for that matter, it doesn't have glass on it, that's why, to a different color like red, blue, or green. The weapon stats or anything don't change, it's purely an aesthetic change to glass weapons. So if you're wanting to use them but prefer them to be a different colour, then this mod will do that. And that's pretty much it for this mod. Our next mod is called Assassin's Poisons for Xbox One. Basically what this mod does is adds books to the games that allow you to craft 6 potions at the cooking pot that can be applied to your weapons, or reverse pickpocketed so placed into targets inventories. Once in the targets inventory, use the passive dehydration spell to make the target drink the potion. The potions are given names that are based on the different apple drinks to make it more convincing that the target will drink them, and you can either give them a potion or a poison. So here are all the things that this mod actually adds. Craftable potions and poisons. With the basic knowledge from the book Weak Potions Explained, you can make the weak potions that have a duration of, of one minute, and they include the death potion, aka weak apple cider. This causes the target to die in 10 to 20 seconds. Powerless poison, aka weak apple wine causes the target to lose all magicka in 10 to 20 seconds. Distilled politics, which is weak apple beer, causes the target at any level to attack everything. And petrification, the weak apple spirit, causes total paralysis at any level to any NPC. With the advanced knowledge from the book Notes on Poisons, you can make strong potions with a duration of 3 minutes instead, and the selected potions can be crafted after reading any book. So Blessed Draft causes your weapons to harm undead with Holy Fire and Banish Daedra for a duration of 2 minutes. Dwemer Oxidizer causes your weapon to slowly paralyze and disintegrate Dwemer Automatons for a duration of 6 minutes. And if you're looking for any of the book locations, the location of the weak potions explained are by the alchemy craft benches in the White Vial in Windhelm, Grave Concoctions in Falkreath, Angelica's Aromatics in Solitude, and so on, so pretty much every alchemy store in the game. The Notes on Poisons book is located in the Dark Brotherhood Sanctuary by the Spider. So if you're looking for a cool mod that adds in some new potions and poisons in the game, and allows you to use them on unwary NPCs, then this is definitely a cool mod for you to download and try out. Our next mod is called Tullius Armor, uses Daedric stats and perks. This mod is a simple one and it basically replaces the stats of the Tullius Armor with that of a Daedric Armor. So now you can get a really cool looking armor in the game, which is the Tullius Armor, but you can now have it as powerful as Daedric. And it can also be improved at the workbench thanks to the Daedric Smithing perk as well. So it's a really cool one if you want to use the Tullius Armor, and that pretty much does it for the improved Tullius Armor perk. This is a cool mod called Concentrated Vanilla Magic. It was designed to make magic in the game feel less like a bow and arrow to attack and make it feel like it flows through you like the dark side of the force. So we can now take a look at the actual changes that this mod makes to the spells in game in order for that to happen. You get continuous fire destruction spells, fire bolts, incineration, ice spikes, ice spears, chain lightning, lightning bolt, thunderbolt, spectral arrow, and includes fireball, blizzard, ignite, and freeze. So they are all now continuous spells. Destruction projectiles have gravity and fireball explosions and may have a chance to knock down NPCs. One-handed master destruction spells. You can now use telekinesis on objects and NPCs, excluding mammoths, giants, and dragons, and ghosts, of course. Wands are stronger and have repulsive effects on attack and hostile NPCs at close range, excluding mammoths, giants, dragons, and ghosts as well. Also not very effective against flying creatures. Flesh spell effect shaders only affect skin and look like oak, stone, etc. So now the flesh spell effects look more realistic. Spectral arrow now uses bound arrow projectiles, also is silent now. Rollwind cloak protects you from fall damage while active. 
Also, crouching, so sneaking, enables a vertical super jump. So that is all the changes that the mod makes to the game in order to try and make magic and game feel more flowy and natural, rather than like a weapon such as using a bow and arrow. After testing it out, I have to admit I do really like what this mod is trying to do. I guess in the end it's really a personal preference, so download and try it out for yourself to see if you prefer using magic this way. Okay, on to the next mod. Our next mod is all about trying to improve the damage and effectiveness of bow and arrows in the game. So in order to do this, the mod tries to improve several of the marksman perks in your skill tree, and we can take a look at exactly what they do. Overdraw fully leveled does 200% more damage versus 100% more damage that it does in vanilla. Hunter's Discipline gets 3 times more arrows, where it was 2 times before. Critical Shot gains 5% higher chance to do critical hits each level, and that's on top of the original 10%, and more critical damage at max level, so 60% instead of 50%. And finally, Bullseye now has 25% chance to paralyze the targets instead of just 15 I think this is a welcome addition to the game. As a bow user in a lot of my playthroughs, I always feel like the bone arrow should be a bit more powerful so that I can kill things a bit easier so I don't always have to rely on sneak attacks. Sometimes it's just fun to charge in head first and attack close range with your bow. Not really the way it's supposed to be used, but everyone's different and I do that kind of thing all the time. So making bows a bit more powerful works good for me for something like that and I'm sure you can find other uses for having better marksman perks in game. That's just the reason why I like this mod. And that's pretty much it for the extra powerful marksman mod. So if you're looking for some more powerful bow and arrow weapons, then check this one out. Next up, we have Dragon Ball Transformation Pack. In the last video, we had the Dragon Ball Spell Pack. In this one, we have the Dragon Ball Transformation Pack, which allows you to go Super Saiyan. So we could take a look at exactly what the mod adds. Kyoken drains stamina, buffs damage and magicka regeneration. Health depletes if you run out of stamina. And this power can kill you if you're not careful with it. So make sure that you have enough stamina. You can go Super Saiyan. This drains magicka, buffs damage and damage resistance. Super Saiyan version 2 drains magicka quicker than Super Saiyan version 1, buffs damage and damage resistance by twice as much as it did in Super Saiyan 1. And finally, Super Saiyan 3 drains magicka and stamina both at a very fast rate, buffs damage and damage resistance far more than Super Saiyan level 2, but depletes health if you run out of both magicka and stamina. Unlike Kaioken though, Super Saiyan level 3 will not kill you, you'll revert to base form with 10 health left. All abilities have special effects tied to them matching their aesthetic in the show, and Super Saiyan God will be added in the future as part of a quest. Super Saiyan Blue, so when you go with the blue colour, may or may not be added, it depends on whether the mod author can properly balance it, and all abilities can be gained by visiting the Warriors Memorial located south of Shimmer Mist Cave and northwest of Whiterun, and it's built into the side of the mountain. Kaioken is free, but the Super Saiyan forms can only be reached by praying at the shrine inside at a certain level, and it requires you to be level 30, and another 10 for the each of the higher Super Saiyan forms. So if you wanted to play Skyrim as a Super Saiyan, then it's pretty much possible now with this mod and the Spell Pack mod from the previous video, and we're just waiting on some cool Super Saiyan armors now to go with them all. Well, that pretty much covers it for the Dragon Ball Transformation Pack mod. Our next mod is called Blood Moon Werewolves, a new quest mod for PlayStation 4. Yes guys, we have a new quest mod for PlayStation 4. Let's take a look at exactly what Blood Moon actually does. Blood Moon is a new quest mod that's about a war between werewolves and Skull Hunters. So it sounds cool so far. First off, we can start this quest several ways. Travel to Raven Rock and talk to the East Empire Captain to start the Empire quest. Or alternatively, you can visit the Skull Village to start the Blood Moon quest. Or you can go to several of the new locations that have been added around Solstheim. The quest is about unlocking the mystery of the Blood Moon Prophecy, and the mod adds to the game a new quest obviously, new miscellaneous missions, some new locations and new furniture and equipment related to the mission. You have to choose your side and prepare for a war between Skull and Werebeasts. Sounds like a lot of fun and definitely a mod you should consider trying out. The Grand Bathhouse is an awesome player home that is both a bathhouse and an arena, located just northwest of Shard's Watchtower on the east of the map. For features, this house is an arena, bathhouse and player home with 5 levels of difficulty. It has auto sorting storage system for your items, all main crafting tables and forges excluding the Ethereum forge, so that's blacksmith forge and smelter, enchanting and alchemy and it includes the staff enchanter as well, adjustable water level in the main bathhouse, lights that activate depending on the time of the day, fully compatible with hearthfire multiple adoptions mod so that's really cool, plenty of idle markers for followers to use, 
a Dragon Souls to perk point conversion system, purchasable upgrades such as bathhouse guards and bathroom, we will go over that in a second, and of course on top of this there's regular house stuff like beds, storage, display cases, setting areas, like dining table and thrones, and a kitchen with cooking pot and oven and much much more. The house also comes with more stuff like the grand console, this is the area where you can use the arena feature of the main bathhouse. Simply pull the lever next to the throne to make it appear, and you can do the following things once it's activated, you can participate in a fight, start battles between NPCs, and toggle certain features. Finally guys, the house comes with some upgradable features. Located on the outside of this house is a mailbox that allows you to upgrade some stuff or a fee of course, and they include a bathroom for 10,000 gold, so it's a very expensive bathroom, pet fish, which you must have the bathroom first and they cost 300 gold, more guards for 6,000 gold, and you can add some additional beds for 3,000 gold. So overall guys, this house is a really awesome one, and it's definitely one of the coolest houses we've featured so far. The size, the features, the attention to detail are all really awesome. You have pretty much everything you need with enough space for your family and followers as well. Overall, a really cool place to live and definitely worth checking out. Well guys, there we have it, 8 brand new console mods that are awesome, and you should definitely try them if you like the look of them in the video. If you enjoyed today's video, like, comment and subscribe. I will be back later today with another Skyrim mod video. And yes, I'm still planning to upload the top 10 Xbox mods and the next fictional lore story at some point. I've just been really busy lately and haven't had much time. But they will be out soon. As always, I hope you have an awesome day guys, and I will see you all next time for more Skyrim console mods. See you then. Console mods.